Revolutionary outburst is a product of time, something we all remember from our history books while studying about the struggle for national freedom during school days. But what always intrigued me was to get some understanding of the kind of personal journey these revolutionary leaders embarked on, the kind of sacrifices made and personal ambitions that were put aside to take a stand against the oppression, a stand for their self-respect and dignity from the British. The kind of radical trends that were adopted by early revolutionaries, from setting up of fitness clubs or akharas in the 1860s, to the establishment of secret societies for extolling the cult of the bomb in the 1900s, is something that always piqued my interest and gripped me more to explore on the subject. By the turn of the century, these maverick efforts were given a different direction and leadership in Bengal, the culmination of which led to the inception to one of the most extreme and militant secret societies which cried out loud for a new era through its propaganda called the Jugantur. It is in 1902 that a young man named Barindranath Ghosh arrives to Bengal, being sent by his elder brother Aurobindo to recognize himself to one of the secret societies in Bengal. When he came to Bengal in 1902, uh, Barindranath was disillusioned rather than encouraged because he found that he, uh, that his propaganda did not actually evoke much of a uh, reaction amongst uh, Bengali youth and uh, he soon realized that perhaps um, the Bengali youth were not really prepared for a uh, large-scale revolutionary movement so he went back uh, he realized that some other form of organization was necessary um, that a concentrated period of propaganda was necessary uh, before something concrete emerged. So around about the middle of 1903, he decided to go back to Baroda, to his brother. We have the paper setting. I mean, the Jugantor uh, newspaper proves to be hugely popular because uh, it has a new message for the for, for the Bengali youth, the, and this new message is that of terrorism or revolutionary nationalism. So the paper starts its first few publications at this address, 27 Kanaidhar Lane, as mentioned by Narendra Gosain in his confession. But because of a few press prosecutions set on the paper and lack of financial backing led to the downfall of the Jugandar paper. Houses for printing changed occasionally. Barin at this point decides that the, the Jugantar paper was if attracting far too much unwelcome attention from the British authorities. So uh, he thinks of something more anonymous. And at this point he thinks of an underground association. Of course he realized that the time was not yet ripe for revolution. But uh, anyway, he thought of getting the Bengali youth together and prepare them in the methods of terrorism, or in other words, militant nationalism. The target of their propaganda is actually Bengali youth. And uh, as I said, the Jugantar became hugely popular and uh, uh, it sold at a very low price, which made it very easy for uh, people to purchase it. And uh, we soon find that the, Brit uh, the British, uh, grow not only growing suspicious of the newspaper, but fearing the influence of the newspaper on Bengali youth. We find that the Jugantor has a deep influence on the Bengali youth. Again, the official uh, archives preserve letters written to the Jugantor office from, uh, from <coughs> youth all over Bengal. 
and uh, so n n naturally the british are concerned the british are concerned and uh, and they uh, not only do they increase surveillance of the jugantor newspaper they prepare lists of those who subscribe to the jugantor claim not only do they prepare lists of the writers but of all those who subscribe to the uh, newspaper and then there comes a point where they think that the newspaper should be suppressed okay because it's pro proving to be too dangerous for the continuance of british rule and uh, so the initial steps taken by the british is to send out warnings to these newspapers that uh, such seditious the articles editor. yes these seditious to the editors that such seditious articles should not be published um, or, or else they will be prosecuted but nevertheless what happens is that these series of pro prosecutions bring about the financial ruin of the jugantor and it has to close down in 1908 and uh, now they actually this group um, thought of launching bomb attacks on the british as the first step in their uh, revolutionary movement parindranath sent ullashkar and upindranath uh, banerji to place a bomb uh, on a railway line on which the lieutenant governor was supposed to travel and uh, but this was a failed attempt and uh, but this was followed by a second attempt on their part once again uh, uh, planting a bomb on a railway line on which the lieutenant governor was uh, supposed to travel but he changed his route at the last moment and the bomb also did not burst but unfortunately uh, six police were arrested six innocent police were uh, arrested and uh, though the authorities suspected that they were in the main culprits and uh, someone else was involved in this but anyway the first two attempts were not successful this was followed by uh, another attempt that which was a bomb uh, thrown in the house of um, the mayor of Chandanagar. They did not succeed because they did not have the technology of making perfect bombs. They failed because either the route of the uh, civilian who was the target was changed. They did not know about that. Or the bombs did not, uh, the, the, the fuse did not uh, act properly and the bomb was not detonated. In the next uh, attempt was to uh, launch an attack on the life of uh, Kingsford. The tragic part was that uh, uh, the Kennedy ladies were traveling in a carriage um, that was identical to that of Kingsford. So it was only after Profullo Chaki and Khudiram Bose actually threw the bomb that they realized that they had made a tragic mistake and uh, thrown the bomb at the wrong carriage but uh, they had made up their minds that earlier on that they would not be caught alive and uh, they had been supplied with a uh, with two pistols and 35 cartridges uh, by uh, Barin and uh, they were determined to use up all of these arms uh, to escape arrest the british now launched a series of raids at a number of locations seven in number uh, and amongst the uh, amongst the seven was uh, 15 gopimohan dotto lane uh, in uh, then 134 harrison road 30 by 2 harrison road 48 gray street 38 by 4 raja nobokrish uh, nobokrishna street then 4 harrison road and of course there is uh, Mura, 32 murari pukur road and uh, these uh, raids actually yielded the maximum number of guns and ammunition at two locations one at 34 harrison road and the other at 32 murari pukur uh, road after their arrest begins the historic alipur bomb conspiracy and uh, actually it is one of the most sensational trials um, in the history of the Indian uh, independence movement. The killing of Dorin Goshai uh, was uh, prompted by the logic of war. Now Dorin Goshai was one of the revolutionaries. 
and it was now clear that Naren Goshai would be licking things that might implicate Aurobindo. And this was a, a danger signal. And therefore, uh, Shottin Bosch and uh, uh, Kanaila Lotto decided on their own to eliminate Noren Ghoshai. And, and um, again, um, an interesting digression is that, um, of course, uh, Kanailal and uh, Shottin Bosch uh, were sentenced to death. So it was a, an alarming point for the British administration because just in the, inside the jail premises, and, uh, under their surveillance, these two people can uh, kill uh, an approval, uh, uh, Raj Shakhi, no? oh, he was a Raj Shakhi. So it was very alarming and a very daring act. So on 6th May 1909, uh, uh, Beechcroft, he delivered his judgment on Alipur bomb case. Uh, this verdict involved 36 suspects. And uh, <coughs> the judge sentenced to death uh, Barin Ghosh and Ullashkar Dotta under sections 121, 121A and 122 Indian Penal Code. Aurobindo stated in his statement that I was not aware of the existence of any secret society at, in Bengal. So that was Aurobindo's reaction. reaction. Aurobindo finally released by the court. Okay. And uh, Barin Ghosh, Ullashkar Dotto were sentenced to be hanged. Hemchandra Dashkanungu, Upendranath Banerjee were sentenced to be transported for life. The two main accused after certain dilemma filed their appeal in the High Court on 30th May 1909. On 9th August, the Chief Justice and uh, Kandrav, who tried Khudiram's case, commenced hearing appeal, which continued till 12th October, whereby the, their death penalty were converted into life imprisonment. So none was hanged in this um, case other than Khudiram Bosch. Khudiram was hanged be because of that Mujaffarpur bomb case.